It is a pleasure today to invite Ambassador Tanmay Lal back on stage, along with State Secretary Daniel Westland, uh, State Secretary uh, to the Minister of Climate and the Environment at the Ministry of Climate and Enterprise, to share the efforts of the Leadership Group for Industry Transition, including some uh, news to share, which uh, uh, they are going to be announcing very soon. May I welcome you, Ambassador? Welcome, welcome, State Secretary. Nice to meet you. Ambassador, can you get started? Uh, State Secretary uh, Westland, uh, CEOs from Sam Vision and Steel Authority of India Limited. Colleagues from Lead It uh, Secretariat uh, at Stockholm Environment Institute, friends. Uh, it, it's great to join another important session of Engaging India at Almadalen. And this session is uh, made even more special as we have two new members, one each from India and Sweden, joining the Lead It, the India Swedish Joint Climate Action Global Initiative at this platform. Our special thanks to State Secretary Westland for joining us today. And we are happy to partner the Swedish Ministry of uh, Climate and Enterprise, NACI, at this uh, session on scaling climate action. Uh, Lead It is a good example of real international collaboration uh, for a collective, uh, collective low carbon future. Only a few months back, uh, Prime Ministers Modi and Ulf Christensen jointly launched the Lead It 2.0 during COP28 at Dubai for the next three years. This was a recognition at the highest level of the useful uh, work and contribution that Lead It has made since its inception around five years ago uh, at the United Nations Climate Summit. Uh, new members, both companies and uh, countries, continue to join this initiative. Uh, decarbonization of steel and cement production, which are essential ingredients of uh, infrastructure today, but with very high carbon emissions, is a key focus of Lead It. Therefore, it is uh, especially exciting to have two more important engineering companies, one each from steel and cement sectors, join the Lead It uh, coalition today. Uh, steel Authority of India Limited is an Indian public sector undertaking that traces its origin uh, 70 years ago. And today, Sale is one of the largest steel producers in India. And we are uh, happy that we have the chairman uh, Sale here today. Uh, Sale is also focused on reducing its uh, GHG emissions significantly by 2030. Semvision, a five years uh, young Swedish tech company, is focused on drastically reducing uh, the carbon emissions in the cement making process by replacing limestone with the industrial uh, byproducts, including from the steel making process. Uh, so again, a very exciting uh, prospect. Our compliments to Sale and Samvision for their decision to join Lead It Family and for their commitment to help global industrial uh, decarbonization efforts. India-Sweden cooperation on uh, environment and climate is unique and has a long history. And it goes back more than five decades to the 1972 Stockholm uh, Conference, which was the first ever UN conference on human environment. On a more personal note, uh, may I mention that my first uh, professional experience as a chemical engineer was at a 1 million ton cement plant that was being operationalized uh, in India more than 30, uh, 35 years ago in 1987. And that was the year, in fact, when the Montreal Protocol on countering ozone, ozone depletion was finalized and which has since proved very, very successful. But this was before the first uh, IPCC report on climate change was even published and the commencement of the UNFCCC negotiations. And 25 years later, I had the opportunity of uh, serving as one of India's climate negotiators in these negotiations. Uh, these uh, continue to be a work in progress. And therefore, in this context, working now with Swedish friends and partners and lead it is very special due to the focus on collaborative climate action through concrete uh, engineering solutions and leveraging investment to help transition towards a global net zero. Uh, I may add that the scale and speed of the ongoing uh, transformation in India is not only essential for India, but is also critical for the global success on climate action. And at the same time, this transformation in the world's fastest growing large economy uh, provides huge business opportunities and avenues for global economic growth. 
Today, clean technologies and sustainability solutions are a key and growing aspect of India, Sweden, business, technology, innovation, and talent linkages. Uh, before concluding, may I say that uh, engaging India at uh, Almed Island platform has grown in its scope and uh, content over the last few years, and this is its uh, fifth edition, and I have all engaged uh, with the three previous editions. Our compliments to the team at uh, Content People, led by uh, Mr. Pali Mehra and Mr. Swaminathan for these efforts, uh, and we wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ambassador Lal, for the invitation to come to this ex event today, and especially this exciting session. On a beautiful day like this, um, it's easy to forget the dark clouds building up on the horizon. Climate change is an existential threat to humanity, and we must tackle this challenge urgently, uh, prepare for, for actions that we need to take. The green transition is necessary, but it also holds great opportunity, and I guess that's partly what Lead It is about, to, to see this opportunity and to take it. We met on numerous occasions over the years to discuss transition of the heavy industries. The Swedish government is proud to co-chair the Leadership Group for Industry Transition, or lead it, together with India. Since the launch in 2019, we have worked together to continuously develop the initiative. We are working to keep lead it relevant for our countries and members, governments and companies alike. This was manifested not least at COP28, when the Honourable Prime Ministers Narendra Modi and Ulf Kristersson launched lead it 2.0 and the new industry transition platform. Sweden and India have joined forces to share experiences and knowledge to cooperate on innovation and technology development and to develop the concrete projects of mutual benefits to speed up the green transition in the steel and cement sectors. Leaded members demonstrate that a zero emission future is possible. New technologies are developed and implemented, and they must also be industrialized and spread. The industry is in the driving seat of the green transition. The role of the government is to enable their work. The central competences are fossil-free energy, efficient permitting, uh, permitting processes, skilled people, and the infrastructure needed. If I drop my cards for a bit, do you remember when we still called it the hard to abate sectors? Or even we thought it was impossible to abate sectors? That's not the case anymore. Now we see progress happening, in uh, not the least among the leaded membership, uh, member companies. So I'm very glad to see that the progress is here, that we uh, five years ago, ago talked of as uh, hard, hard to abate, in hard to abate sectors, which we don't really need to talk about anymore. Back to the manuscript. Two weeks ago, the government of Sweden decided on the next step to accelerate the green transition in Sweden. We have uh, two, now two national coordinators for the industry transition here. Uh, they were appointed uh, in uh, something called an acceleration office. The task uh, they were allotted is to suggest solutions to overcome obstacles, to handle conflicting goals, and to increase investments to increase the Swedish competitiveness. Basically, this is about getting people to talk to each other, and these two people will be our uh, coordinators to, to make sure that uh, they, they will lubricate the processes and make sure that people talk to each other to get, get this to happen in Sweden. Sweden is very honoured and pleased with the close collaboration with India in the green transition. Action to achieve global industry transition needs both established heavy industry and technology innovators to learn from each other and to achieve sustainable growth and prosperity. The Leaded Group is therefore delighted to welcome the two new members, both committed to achieving decarbonisation and tackling different challenges, but representing new uh, opportunities. Semvision, having developed groundbreaking technology to reduce emissions from cement production by 80 to 100%, and Sale, one of the largest steel producers in India, and a company taking on an active role in the India-Sweden industry transition platform. I'm pleased to see the presence of Oscar. Are you here? Ah, there you are. Uh, Mr. Tivari. Uh, hello, nice to meet you. 
Uh, you're the director in charge at Bukhari Steel Plant. I should say Oscar is uh, the CEO of Sam Vision. Uh, Manoj Kumar, are you here as well? Nice to meet you. Uh, you're the chief general manager of uh, at Durgapur Steel Plant. Uh, I'm very glad you're here. A world with net zero emissions from heavy industry by 2050 needs all stakeholders to commit to a fair and just transition that includes all regions of the globe. The India-Sweden Leadership Group on Industrial Decarbonisation is strengthened by the new members and I warmly welcome you to the Leaded family. I look forward to work with you on our journey to a zero carbon future. I'm convinced that we will have reason to meet again to celebrate more milestones in the years to come. Most welcome. Thank you. Well, thank you, Ambassador, and thank you, State Secretary. Uh, and uh, with that, uh, please stay on stage, because may I invite the chairperson as well of the Steel Authority of India, who's with us, uh, Mr. Amarendu Prakash, and the CEO of uh, SEM Vision, uh, who is with here, Oscar Holland, as well as other members of the Steel Authority of India. Uh, please do come on stage. We will take a group photo. We will have another one of all the speakers together as well. <laughs> in the center, yeah. Yeah, from middle. Uh, I take this off? Take it from top. Thank you. Thank you. And please stay on stage. Uh, may we also invite all the other speakers on stage, please, for a group photo. And then we begin. Uh, we will take a fika break. I promise there is coffee and cake. Oh, but before that, we have a question and answer session. Sorry, 15 more minutes here. Yeah. Uh, One. Uh, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe some of us can. Oh, oh it's, we can stand, I think. We should be okay, Mayor. Yeah. Okay, please. Yeah. Come. Yeah, Rainy? Thank you, everyone. Please take your seats back. May I, uh, but may I request uh, Felipe, Oscar, and Amarindu on stage to remain on stage, please. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. All right, uh, are we ready? Are we ready? Do we have the mics? Okay, so uh, welcome uh, and congratulations uh, to Mr. Amarindu Prakash, 
uh, Mr. Osko Harlan, and of course, uh, Lead IT for this announcement. Uh, Y'all are growing as we see by year by year. But uh, let's start with you, uh, Marindu. Um, you had uh, one of India's largest uh, steel production. Uh, well, it is a public sector company, and you'd, you've had a strategic vi a vision focusing on reducing the environmental aspect uh, of steel production through innovative technologies. Now, uh, how did you decide to join the leadership group for industry transition? Uh, uh, I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, I'm audible. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, all the dignitaries here and uh, all friends uh, from India and Sweden. Why did we decide to join? In the earlier session, as Rupali mentioned, five words. He was giving five words. I'll give you six. Uh, one world, one family, and there is only one future. So uh, to us, uh, what we feel is uh, climate change is something uh, which does not look at the color of your face. Uh, it does not matter. You are white, black, brown. Uh, it does not have any boundaries. If we see, uh, if the temperatures are rising, they're rising as much in Europe as in India or, or in uh, Mideast or uh, Africa. Uh, if floods are coming, the floods are not choosing their place. There are no, lo no longer places which are uh, known as, uh, this is the place where flood will be there or this is the place where you will have uh, dry weather. It is something so unpredictable. It is going to affect each and every person irrespective of what you have done in the past or what you are going to do in the future. So uh, this is the right time when every single human, this is a question that humanity faces rather than a company faces or a country faces. To us, it is no longer a question, so much so uh, that in our company, for example, if you look at the priority list of the company, what are our top five priorities? Decarbonization is not one of them. We have declared decarbonization is the survival question. It's a question of survival, not a priority, not a business priority. So that's the reason we come to lead IT, to collaborate, to discuss with others, and we feel if that's, uh, this is the only way forward. Well, it also indicates the intent and the urgency of the issue, doesn't it? Uh, coming to you, uh, Oscar. So Os Oscar Holland, uh, CEO of SemVision, and uh, a company that develops innovative low-carbon carb cement solutions. Um, what brought you to uh, lead IT? Uh, it's a fairly young company. It, it is, uh, and, and uh, I, I travel around with this. Uh, this is our PowerPoint presentation, our, our sort of fossil free cement that, that we showcase that we are more than just a PowerPoint presentation that some very young companies are, but we're sort of past that stage. And what sort of drove us to, to lead, lead IT is obviously the, the, pot the potential in collaboration is key to actually moving the needle. And, and I think the, there's, there's fantastic symbolism in standing here and sharing the stage um, w w with, w w with you in the fact that our main raw material comes from the steel industry. So, I mean, just on this stage, we have an opportunity to actually collaborate and look how can we take waste material that you don't use, upcycle that into something of high value, and use that to build a more sustainable future. And I think that's those opportunities that's, that's so evident when you stand here today, and that's what we sort of envisage when we, when we apply to become a member. All right, also to run us through how the technology uh, really works, what is the innovation really? So there's a, there's a number of innovations. So first of all, the fact that we can take raw material that nobody else uses, and we have a technique to treat it. So uh, it's valuable for us. Uh, then secondly, we have a, a chemistry which allows us to produce cement with a much lower content of calcium oxide. Uh, and and uh, that in turn allows th those two innovations in turn leads us to produce this in an electrified process. And we have produced cement clinker with plasma, with hydrogen, uh, for example, as well. So a number of innovations allows us to produce this, which is a... Uh, Cement that is, from a technical perspective, in many ways better than the Portland cement, the traditional cement that we use today. That was a long answer. Thanks for giving me the opportunity. Yeah. Uh, uh, Philippe, coming back to you, uh, I, Lead IT has been orchestrating a lot of the partnerships, or facilitating a lot of the partnerships. And why are these partnerships at various levels of industry, from uh, sort of your big giants uh, uh, to young and uh, young companies as well? Why are these partnerships important, and how is le uh, Leader going about it? 
Thanks, Rapali. And first of all, thank you so much on behalf of our Secretariat for taking the decision uh, to join to join Lead It. Uh, and a big warm welcome from everyone in, in the group. Um, of course, we had to, we're, I'm delighted to be joined on stage by what we can see as an incumbent steel company as well as a startup cement company and that really shows what technology provided to the cement industry, rather. Um, and it shows a real clear message that no one actor can, can solve this alone. And as long as both incumbents and startups are willing to drive the, the transition, then we're in this together in a, in a really positive way. And I would just urge uh, companies that have joined Lead It and others to really demonstrate their commitment to the Paris Agreement or continue to do so, to engage with Lead It and, and its members, and also to be a champion for the transition, which both of you, by being here, are demonstrating already. Right. Uh, now, how important uh, is sort of the India-Sweden relationship as part of Lead It? Because it was started in 2019 uh, or envisioned in 2019 with the Lead It 1.0 uh, by India and Sweden. Now you have new partners as well. There are several countries. So to, to, uh, could you take us through that and sort of the yeah. importance of building country-wise as well as industry? Yeah, absolutely. I can say that you know Sweden and India have been at the heart of Lead It since the very beginning. They're the very cornerstone of of the initiative itself. And I think as we move forward, it's it's good to have those two countries working together within each of the ministries and agencies that are involved in those countries, breaking down the silos in each of those countries, and therefore being able to provide the enabling conditions that allow the companies that work in those countries and across the as across the world to be able to thrive based on the enabling conditions they put forward. All right. Uh, coming to you, Amarindu, uh, there are also challenges, right, in decarbonization. While there is so much of good news towards innovation, uh, Ryan brought up uh, the point that there needs to be a lot more, right? So what are, the, uh, what are the challenges that you see within your sector on that road to decarbonization? And uh, how do you see those being solved? Uh, Right, as, as Rainer mentioned, uh, it is all about first of all defining what decarbonization means to you and how much, uh, you, uh, where you can move. So the challenges that we face currently are uh, twofold. If we, uh, if I ask, uh, talk about steel industry in particular, uh, we practically, as a uh, matter, if you look at our cost sheet uh, as to what costs uh, 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 is, goes into steel making, you will find almost 50% of the cost is energy. So to tell you, when while reducing energy is not just a decarbonization goal, reducing energy helps me earn more profit, brings down my cost. So there are items which are in the money. So there are initiatives like efficiency in how we operate. Uh, can we make it more efficient? Can we learn from others who have done it earlier? Can we jointly work on improving the efficiency of the process? So those will be in the money and are a no-brainer. Uh, uh, one has to go ahead with that and uh, one can shake hands on that. The second aspect is which is out of money. That means you need to put in more money in order to make a cleaner steel, greener steel. And that is the question where uh, the whole mechanism of financing, the whole mechanism of, uh, uh, to tell you very frankly, lead, uh, lead it is something that I have been trying to assess and we'll, as we go forward, I'll request every member of lead it to get in and not think, okay, I have got a new technology, I have got a new innovation, can I protect it and take it as, make it as a business advantage so I can do more business than you. Uh, this is only one earth, one family and one future only. So it doesn't matter you earn more profit or I earn more profit, ultimately we are going to end up with the same world. So we need to all realize that all these out of money questions need to be solved jointly. Everybody has to play their part. And together I believe we can, uh, uh, intermingle, uh, we can talk to each other, we can help read each other's mind in order to bring more solutions on this. Fantastic. And uh, I think you've ended it on a very good note. So uh, I will perhaps end this session there as well. Uh, collaboration and, uh, you know, talking to each other, not uh, sharing solutions, so, so co-solutioning as well, and uh, co-thinking for our planet. So thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. Uh, we have a fika break now. Uh, if the coffee and cakes are ready, give me a thumbs up, someone. Yes, it, they are. All right, so uh, please uh, head out there, there uh, and enjoy the fika. We will come back uh, in exactly 25 minutes at uh, 3.25 for our next session on innovation for climate action. Thank you.